Hello everyone, Danny here. I uh, haven't really posted in a long time, as I'm sure you're aware if you view my videos. Uh, looks like the last one I posted was the Hooper V deck, which, um, there we go, the Hooper V deck, which I did about a month ago. So it's been a while. Um, been busy, been doing stuff. And one thing I've done, I actually want to, well, that's weird, see my, <laughs> one thing I've done is actually something I want to share with you right now, which is this. I've written a book. It's a novel called Tales of the Turnip Knight. And there's me. And uh, yeah, it's a real book. I thought I might just introduce it to you, show you a few places where you could potentially purchase it if you're interested, um, share it with friends, and maybe do a little short read of some of the earlier pages. Yeah, there it is. Uh, just because, you know, I like to do it the old handy cam way. Here it is in Waterstones, Tales of the Tyrant, like paperback. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go for the hardback. It was um, just a bit too much. So we went with paperback. Um, it is available also on Kindle, and it will get um, a, uh, what do you call it, um, audio book as well. But here it is, Waterstones, seven ninety nine. dollars uh, We can order this from the publisher. This is sort of disappointing. I was hoping to get it in the shop, but currently they don't seem to do that. Um, I'm hoping it becomes popular enough that I can get it in the shop. That'd be really cool. It's also available on Amazon. You can see here Kindle three pound fifty. Read with our free app or paperback seven ninety nine. Note this item's available. For yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we get fifty percent off if you want with code giftwrap fifty. Very nice. Um, so yeah, available there and there. Uh, I've also found it here. If you are, I believe, I assume American. Here it is in America. Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble, um, so that's really cool. Eleven dollars ninety-five, oh, or you can get our Nuke book for four for four dollar fifty, four bucks fifty. That was atrocious. Do apologize. Uh, what's this here? Can you? What does that do? Doesn't do anything. Uh, here is the book on the original publisher website, Tale of the Tyrant Knight. But this is published on Austin Macaulay. So thank you to them for publishing this book. Really cool. Uh, yep, some information here. Uh, author, great picture there. I'm intentionally putting the hand behind the bicep to make it look bigger. Oh yeah. And a little bit of a sample here, um, which doesn't seem to be working. That's great. Thanks guys. Thanks for that. Try that again. Ah, oh, there it is. Like, yeah. Woo! We can get a little sample of it there. So you can actually read this. Uh, well, read a little bit of it at home whenever you want to. So that's really cool. Um, so we've looked at it. Happy days. Let's uh, let's do a little read through of a little bit, shall we? See how it goes. Right. So yeah, this is Tales of the Tarrant Light by Danny Dowling, which is myself. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to quickly actually just highlight this artwork on the front. So this was drawn by an artist I found on a Facebook site of Psychedelic Art. He drew something that was quite graphic and I was like wow he's really good uh, I got hold of him I was like look how you know I want a commission for artwork and he said I'll do it for a signed copy so that was really cool um but yeah just wanted to let me know I did offer to pay but he said just sign copies so that's really cool so I'm actually sending him to sign copies um as a thanks and hopefully as well fingers crossed there it is um I can have uh, the same individual for all future covers. Assuming there will be future covers, that'd be really cool. Uh, here we go. First little page, a little bit about me. Danny Dowling is a man from Exeter, Devon, with a massive imagination. Danny has filled various roles in life: former professional athlete in taekwondo, amateur stage actor, fitness instructor, and now writer and creator. Danny has always been fascinated and captivated by the incredible worlds created by artists throughout history and is excited to hopefully capture the imagination of every reader of his work. So that's you, hopefully. Uh, oh yeah, thank you to everyone who has encouraged me to show this to the world. Thank you to my family and my friends for your support. Moreover, I'd like to thank you, Adam Brown, who's the artist, um, for this amazing art cover. Uh, and for, oh, Johnny Leach, of course, I couldn't forget. Johnny Leach here. Uh, actually drew, created this. He is an artist himself. I should actually pull up his thing. Uh, I remember the name of it. Um, 
that, of course, yes, yes, it's just the farmer and the fold. So a, a, a friend of mine, a good friend, has created this book, self-published on Amazon, The Farmer and the Fold. Do give it a look as well. Um, but this is the individual that created the artwork for my uh, for my book. So I just wanted to say thank you, Johnny. Thank you very much for that. Now, let's get back to the turnip night. Uh, here it is. Yep, front. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This is where it truly begins. And this is where it actually began. This is the first thing I just randomly wrote whilst talking to someone on Facebook, chatting nonsense while supposedly talking about Pokemon cards and just not really concentrating. And I came up with this. There is a prophecy. When the world is on its last legs, when evil, hate, tyranny and oppression have dominated over all else and there is no hope left for justice and truth, there will be a dark figure arising from the horizon. It is said that he has the power of a thousand mages in each of his fingernails, and a sword so sharp that he can cut away the air itself and leave his enemies without anything to breathe. He will walk vast and distant lands, freeing the innocent and stamping out injustice and tyranny with a stare so intense and with such resolve that a man with an impure heart would die at a glance. And the name of this man, I hear you ask? He is known only as the Turnip Knight. A hero is not measured by the strength of his sword, but by the strength of his justice. I suppose it's kind of like a like a prologue sort of prophecy, uh, prophecy, isn't it? Yeah, let's get into chapter one here. The sun rose over Dragon's Peak and began to pierce in through the windows of the wood huts of Ducca Village. Soon the men will stir and prepare for another day of labour, tending to crops, catching the fish of the lake to the south, along with the other day-to-day -day chores. But one boy is already awake standing tall atop his home in a southwesterly area of the village, with the morning breeze blowing in his rough-cut blonde hair, poking through the holes of his hollowed wooden helmet, Derek, the self-proclaimed turnip knight in training, took in the scene that is his home before his morning training. With a twist and a flip, it was in fact a small hop, he placed his foot onto the crate that stacked like stairs next to his home and descended to the next three lower crates before majestically leaping the two-foot drop to the ground. He jumped from the top, but his mum says he'll hurt himself. He is a warrior in training, after all. Derek set off at a brisk pace to the east towards Beacon Forest. With the morning sun in his eyes, he dodged and dived, even throwing in the occasional roly-poly to avoid being blinded by the sharp sunlight. Derek had learnt to always be on, on his guard, even in his peaceful village, and didn't want the sun to be blinding him should he need to engage in a battle. Before too long, Derek reached Beacon Forest and began the natural assault course that he had done every day for nearly a year. It had been almost a year ago to the day since he was told the story of the turnip night by his mother before bedtime. Being eight years old now, he felt stronger than ever, and ready to reach the next level on his way to achieving the rank of the ultimate turnip knight. Some of the other locals have tried to reason with him and tell him that turnip knights don't exist and that he should think about joining the royal guards in the major city Zihan, and perhaps, if he works really hard, he become he could become a Zihan sir. But more on that later. Let's concentrate on Derek for now. But Derek is sure of himself and believes that once he becomes a turnip knight for real, even the Zihan Sirs would consider him their superior. He jumped left and right on the exposed roots of the ancient trees as he made his way deeper in. Swinging from vine to vine, he then began ascending the bridge tree. The bridge tree hangs over the edge of a massive drop into a deep ravine, but happens to extend far enough that you can, in theory, climb across it and jump down on the other side of the waterfall, Without using the safe rope bridge, Derek could see the long, wide branches that extend the full way across the ravine. His eyes narrowed as he considered his route, and he carefully descended the rope, uh, the tree, and walked across the safe rope bridge before his practice uh, towards his practice tree. You can tell why I'm not doing the audiobook for this because I'm falling all over the place. Derek reached the practice tree, and with the piercing blades of sunlight through the gap in the leaves above, Derek unsheathed his wooden justice sword from his makeshift holster, a 
a shred of old rapids, rabbits, rapids, uh, blah, 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 ra rabbit, bloody hell, why is that so hard? Rabbit skin that he's tied around his leather belt that he got last Christmas. And began to engage in almighty battle with, the, with his worthy sparring partner, the tree. For hours, Derek ducked, dodged, and dived, while also furiously whipping and slashing his mighty wooden justice sword, occasionally launching a flying foot frenzy and back elbow at the familiar adversary. Bits and bolts of bark burst away from this practice tree, showering the surrounding forest floor. If an enemy could see him now, they'd run away for sure. I'm getting hungry, he told himself, as he bowed respect uh, respectfully to the tree, that had impressively withstood his arsenal of assault for another day. See you tomorrow, practice tree. With his wooden justice sword safely back and at his hip, Derek waved his practice tree goodbye as he jogged back towards Safe Rope Bridge on his way to a nice helping of his mother's stew left over from last night. And that's all I'm going to read today. So if you enjoyed that, uh, apart from obviously my stammering, Never really done reading like that before. It's quite interesting. I've done a little bit of stage work, but nothing like that. We've just sat and read and hoped for the best. Um, then, yeah, yeah, give it a look. You'll see that uh, a lot of the chapters are very short. Now, that was intentional, literally just a couple of pages, because for me personally, when I... So I've been, I've been reading The Witchers a lot. Uh, well, I say a lot. I've been reading The Witcher series, and I've actually found that the chapters are too bloody long. You know, and I'm like, I'm having to, I'm like, it's late, and I'm trying to read it, and I'm like, ah, oh. if I can just, like, if you don't know, that is like a chapter in the Witcher books. You know, it goes on for so long, and I just find that I have to stop midway for a chapter, and I just get lost, completely lost in what I'm doing. So I've kept it kind of a bit more bam, 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 a bit shorter, a bit um, a bit easier to follow. Maybe some might say, well, it's technically not a chapter, or, or, you know, but for, this is what I've decided I've um, gone with. I've also gone with Roman numerals. Uh, I like Roman numerals. I think it's yeah. We should all just kind of learn a little bit of Roman numerals as we're young. Um, now the book officially is recommended for teens. Um, that is what the publisher decided. I originally said a, a nine to eleven years old. So I'm saying nine to sort of teens. You can see um, there's some playful language. I I enjoy the alliteration and maybe the odd rhyme here and there. It's not a rhyming book necessarily. It's not a poem. Um, it's just a little bit of fun with the language. I, I just I, I tried to have fun writing it, so hope that you have fun reading it. But that's my book, Tales of the Turnip Knight by Danny Dowling. I hope to write more. Well, I have actually already begun writing more. I should just say that now. Um, but hopefully they can be properly published. Either way, I will get the full story of the Turnip Knight created and out there before I die. Um, <laughs> this took me eight years on and off to make. I actually finished it in 2020. Um, the next book will almost certainly not take that long, in case you're wondering. So there it is. Um, I'll try and leave some links for where you can buy it in the comment, in not in the comment section, in the description of this video. Um, yeah, I hope you like it. Um, if you can, get it, get into it. If you uh, have a have a child at school, I don't know, get into the schools. I'll come in and say hello, maybe do a bit of reading, try not to stutter like I did there. And um, yeah, I'd, be, I'd love to do stuff like that. So anyway, that's what, that is it. That's what I wanted to show you. I hope you liked it. And um, yeah, do, do comment and let me know if you're interested in it and if you buy it. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.